just going to sing about this this morning?
Should we vote? Yeah. What'd you decide?
Let's offer up a word of prayer over the offering this morning. Father God, we just thank you that we can gather together and bring forward this offering and all of the offerings out of our lives. We ask that you would take them and multiply them and bless them around our community and our world with the message of salvation through faith in your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. and all the joys of technology, right? Praise God for the wonders of it and the peace through it. <laughs> Do we have any big announcements this week at all? youth group this week dependent upon weather and we'll be in touch via phone calls and all of the great technology aspects that we have and then whether or not the youth, youth message gets to be incorporated next week the Holy Spirit will know and decide and determine yep let's go ahead and open with another word of prayer this morning Father God we just 
thank you that we can gather together as your children through our faith in Jesus of Nazareth. And Father, we just ask that we could, the Holy Spirit would speak through my lips this morning to our open hearts and ears about how to walk out the faith-filled steps like Joseph. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> so, it's good to see all of your smiling faces on this beautiful sunny Sunday morning here. And it feels like it's going to be a beautiful, joyful day today. And I hope that this week, that we've each been able to follow Mary's example that we studied last week in preparation for uh, remembering Jesus' birth in 14 days and being able to find true rest in this time and not be the, the stress that the world tends to try to throw on to our, the celebration of our Lord and Savior's birth, but just enjoying true rest and the peace that he brings to us. And so, am I seeking to follow God's will for remembering and celebrating his son coming to earth to bring us, to bring me back into the family? Am I remember, remembering to follow God's will for my preparations for this celebration? Ephesians 1, verse 5 God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. So, us coming to God as his children brings our creator of everything, the one we call our Heavenly Father. It brings him great joy that he was able to adopt you as his daughter, as his son as his child. And so, following God's will, I believe, is a, a key for my true joy and my true rest to be applied to my head and my heart this time of year. So I want to look for God's will and seek his will and the strength and the wisdom to follow that. In Proverbs 3, verse 6, we're encouraged to seek his will in all you do. And he will show you which path to take. Knowing which path to take. Oh, that's a fun one sometimes, isn't it? I can remember all the different times in life. Oh, yep, I know exactly how I want this to go, and it's going to be perfect if I do it my way. I'll confess, I won't ask for raising of hands at all. But I'll trust that I'm the only one here that has to raise their hands and confess. Yep, played that game once or twice. And I know the end of it isn't very comfortable usually for myself and unfortunately for those around me. But, uh, but I can seek his will and he will show me and show you which path to take. I can remember guiding hunters up in the mountains knowing which path to take. That was a key. That was like not just a, oh yay, fun, easy Sunday ride afternoon key. Depending upon how dark and slick it was the mornings we might ride out, it might be a life or death key. And so am I remembering to seek God's will? And I love how this verse specifies in all that I do. Not just seek God's will in what you do. In some of what you do, seek his will on, you know, on Sundays and maybe Wednesdays, possibly a Friday evening now and then. No, it's seek his will in all that I do thinking, my speaking, the actions that I do, what is God's will for me in this day? And I can seek that out and find it. And we have Mary's example that we can follow and look to. Find true peace in what God's will for her was. And uh, we don't have just Mary's example, but we have other examples we can follow. Like the example of Moses. We think about Moses' story and you know, what he went through to follow God's will, and not only what he went through and how he was able to follow God's will, but the time frame. We think about how many years that Moses was in the desert preparing and then growing up in Pharaoh's family, then leaving Pharaoh's family, then in the desert, then coming back, killing the Egyptian, being on the run, all those details. But Hebrews 11, verse 27, reminds us that it was by faith that Moses left the land of Egypt, 
not fearing the king's anger. He kept right on going because he kept his eyes on the one who is invisible. Moses was seeking God's will in what he did. Did it make sense to the world around him? I'm betting probably not. I don't have, haven't read any books from that time frame written by others that said, yeah, that Moses guy, that was brilliant, or oh, what a crazy duck in the water he was. But just from the world's eyes and our standard now, what Moses did wouldn't look normal or sane necessarily. But Moses kept right on going because he kept his eyes on the one who is invisible, God, his heavenly father. Another example of following God's will and those, how it might impact those around us, uh, Jonah. We remember the story of Jonah and how he was told by God, God's will for him was to go and tell this people, this group of people, you've stepped outside of my will for you. Destruction is coming to you. And Jonah, nope, I don't want to do that. That's not the way I want to play the game. It's not my way. So he uh, focused on his self-centeredness. And Jonah 1, verse 3. But Jonah rose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went, on, went down into it to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. And that idea of following God's will and how it might not line up all the time perfectly with my own self-centered, self-absorbed, perfect, you know, 4.0, yeah, this is, I know what's best for me, this is going to be genius time. God's perfect will for me might not line up with what my mind comes up with. And there, I hope that there won't be lots of times, but there have been times where, similar to Jonah, I wasn't intentionally running away from God's presence, but I wasn't going towards his presence either. And I wasn't seeking God's will for my life. And I need to remember from Jonah's example that if I choose to not follow what God is leading me to do and guiding me to do with his Holy Spirit, with his word and with the fellowship I have with others, that uh, others are going to be impacted by that. It's not just me alone on this earth. It's not just you alone on this earth, is it? We're all here in this awesome boat and this journey together. So me choosing to follow God's will will impact those around me. Just like you choosing to follow God's will will impact those around you and bring forth his love into their lives. In Jonah 1 verse 7, <clears throat> those who are around Jonah just prior to this, we'll remember that as Jonah's running away from God, there's this boat gets to be into a storm. And the storm intensifies and intensifies and grows. And here's Jonah, still in his self-centeredness, sleeping down in the lower deck while all the other people are up on top rowing, trying to save their lives. Trying to correct what went wrong. And in their understanding at the time, they believed, each believed in multiple lots of gods and they were who, did, who made their God mad? Which one of you was the one at fault for this storm coming upon us? And then in 1 verse 7, it tells us, Then the crew cast lots to see which of them had offended the gods and caused this terrible storm. When they did this, the lots identified Jonah as the culprit. <clears throat> and Jonah realizing, okay, I've been caught and I've being corrected on this, he was gracious enough to say, all right, all you around me, this is my fault. I'm going to take responsibility for this. Throw me overboard and the storm will subside. And all of the people around him were, uh, you want us to do what to you? And they prayed, said, Jonah's God, please don't hold us against his death against us. We're casting him into the sea. And they throw him overboard. And, uh, you know, a giant fish comes up and helps him along his journey. And I want to follow God's will 
so that I won't need to be separated from those traveling the journey with me, like Jonah was. If I'm following God's will, I don't need to be separated from my loved ones, my family, my friends, the people I interact with, co-workers, whatever the situation might be. If I don't follow God's will, I might need to be separated from, from them for a little while to learn a lesson like Jonah did. But if I can continually follow God's will, I can trust that I will be able to continue the journey with them. But I can also remember Jonah's example that as he's thrown into the water, God provides a giant fish to come up and take Jonah into its mouth. And he hangs out in the mouth of this fish or in the belly of the fish, I think scriptures words it. But he hangs out there for three days, just like somebody else had to hang out for three days. But the idea that the being in this fish was part of Jonah's salvation. And remembering that if I wind up in the belly of a fish in my own life, in some aspect of my life, spiritually, emotionally, or physically, I can look for God's salvation for me through this process. And God, what are you teaching me? What can I learn through this process right now? And then how can I share that, what I have learned with someone else? And another aspect I can do is a, a step I'll take is, will I remember to slow down and look at my parts, my relationship with God, to see if I've been self-focused and running away from him somehow, if something bad and inconvenient and uncomfortable happens to me? Will I sit down and do some serious soul searching? And all right, Dan, how have you been living life lately? How have you been following God? And have you been walking a consistent, faithful path growing and building your relationship with your Heavenly Father. And I know there are times when I have to honestly confess that, no, I don't do that as perfectly as I wish that I could. As I think up here, oh yes, I could, I should and could do this, 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 and this. But there's far too many mornings where the body's been cold and we wake up underneath a warm bedspread and that pillow feels way too good to the head. And we don't spring out of bed quite as fast as I wish I would sometimes. And I need to remember that and be honest about that. And then what ways can I take and focus on my part of my relationship with God? Trusting that he has taken care of all of his parts of our relationship. And then can I remember that Jonah's time in the fish was part of his salvation? So if I wind up in an uncomfortable situation, physically, emotionally, or spiritually, somehow, okay, me being in that uncomfortable part might be part of my salvation to be able to be just like Jonah, return to land at some point in time to correct someone else around me or to share the knowledge and the love of God that he's shown me with those around me. And Micah 6 verse 8 <clears throat> encourages us that no, O people, the Lord has told you what is good. And this is what he requires of you, to do what is right, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. So am I remembering to follow his will in those three aspects, in everything that I do? My thoughts, which will lead to the words coming out of my mouth, and the actions that I choose to do with my body, and the work that I do, will I do what is right? And in my thoughts, my words and my actions, will I apply mercy? Mercy to those around me, to anyone who's harmed me. Mercy to my loved ones, you know, my wife, my kids, my family. Will I have that attitude and that grace and mercy apply to them? And will I remember to uh, not only do what is right, but also to love mercy when I look in the mirror? Will I look in the mirror with merciful eyes on the one looking back at me, which can be a tough thing to do, I know, personally. Some days it's not the easiest thing to do, look in the mirror to think, okay, have I lived my life right in this way? Especially if the Holy Spirit brings up that memory in the conscience of, oh, you know what, Dan, you could have lived a little bit better, you could have walked a little differently, you could have, A, thought a little differently. Not necessarily the words or the actions that I've done, but I could have thought differently 
about this situation or about this person, and that would have impacted all the things that I did involving them. And I could have shown God's love to them in a better, more personal way. I think one other person we can look at for a really solid example of consistently taking faith-filled steps, we can look at Joseph and what Joseph got to do in preparation for the birth of Jesus. Matthew 1, verses 20 to 21 We'll back up one more time thinking about this before we read it. That prior to this in scripture, we're told that Joseph figures out that Mary has become pregnant. He's engaged to her, so he knows they haven't been able to produce a baby in any way, shape, or form. But he was gracious enough in applying mercy to say, okay, I'm going to humbly, quietly call off this engagement, and we're not going to go through and follow God's will for, for me on this. And as he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. In thinking about this, Joseph had to have had a relationship with God in you know, time thinking, time spent with in prayer, time spent with in study, however they did at that time frame, because he was open to hearing what God's will for him could be. So as he had this relationship and was, he was open to receiving God's love through receiving his plan for him. I mean, thinking about this as a young man with a, you know, a beautiful virgin fiance ready to go do our marriage and enjoy life together, and all of a sudden she's pregnant, for Joseph to say, okay, God, I will follow your will for, for us through this and follow through with this, that man had some serious faith-filled steps in my eyes, you know, and he walked out faithfully and married Mary, and went through the marriage process for nine months with her carrying Jesus and giving birth to Jesus. So he had some intense, good faith-filled steps, I believe. And I think he had to spend time seeking God's wisdom to know what God's voice was when his plan was presented. You know, if I've never heard God's voice, if God presents his plan to me, how will I know that that's God talking to me? But if I've slowed down and taken time to spend time with God in his scripture and spend time with God in prayer, talking with him, spend time with God quietly meditating and just open ears and an open heart listening, God, what would you like to tell me now? What, what will you tell me about this situation? What is your will for this time in my life and what I'm supposed to do right now? And then over the next day, week, month, year, but especially in this time called the present of today. What can I do right now, God? In the time spent with God, Matthew 1, verses 24 to 25, when Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she had given, gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. So he was a faith-filled man and followed God's will that was laid out for him in his time spent with God, in his quiet time. And that's some faith-filled steps that I can try to follow and that I seek to follow in preparation for celebrating and remembering my risen Lord and Savior's birth. That time that we call each year Christmas, Christmas. So Joseph had a lot of a lot of steps to take. And we look to the Gospel of Luke for the different steps that Joseph took and the faith-filled steps that he took, and also what caused these faith-filled steps, how the world around 
you know, the world around us is going to want to influence us, us in some way. So I can spend time praying to God and talking to my Heavenly Father that His influences around will help guide me and shape me and the life that I'm living with those around me and all of my family and my friends and everyone, that our lives can be shaped by the influence of the world around us into His will. In Luke 2, verses 1 to 5, At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. So the world around Joseph helped shape and orchestrate life so that he could follow God's will for his life. And not only that, but in his following of God's will for his life, they were fulfilling multiple prophecies that had been given about the birth of Jesus as God's son. That Jesus would be born in Bethlehem, and that he would be called the Nazarene, and that, he would be, and that he would be born of a virgin. So all these prophecies that had been given, Joseph was faith-filled enough and following God's will for his life enough to where, okay, God, I will follow your will. And I will seek your answers for what I have going on in life. I can have that same opportunity as I prepare to celebrate and remember my risen Lord and Savior's birth coming up on Christmas. And so, what are steps in faith like Joseph that I can take to remember and to celebrate the birth of Jesus? What are some things that I can personally do that I'm sure Joseph had to have done to have the faithful steps that he did? One of them, like we talk about often, I can spend more time communicating with my Heavenly Father in prayer and talking with Him and just having an open conversation and a relationship that's consistent and that I'm taking time not only praying to God and laying forward my thoughts on our relationship, so that I can remember to slow down and be quiet and still and listen for, okay, God, what are your thoughts on our relationship? What is your, your will and your guidance for me in the way that we can live out this life? And I can spend time, as much time as I can, studying all of the, <clears throat> excuse me, all of the time I can spend studying in God's written word and the beauty of technology or we can have the Bible on audio on our cell phone or any other device and be listening to God's word and his truth whenever we're driving down the road or doing work that we can have audio going and that we can hear and comprehend. We can enjoy God's word in that way. And also, in the time that I spend fellowshipping, and communicating and growing in relationship with others, with those around me, I can find and seek for God's will in my life and help them find God's will for their lives. And all these steps are taken in faith in God, trusting that God, you are leading and guiding my steps, my thoughts, my words, my actions, the way that we're living out this life. God, I thank you that you will lead and guide me for this day, this present gift of today, and every day that will follow it. In 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7, we're encouraged. For we walk by faith, not by sight, living our lives in a manner consistent with our confident belief in God's promises. So what are God's promises that I can have constant faithful belief in? I can fellowship with others and grow in my relationship with God through my fellowship with you and you can grow in your relationship with God through fellowship with me, with each other, with those around us. God's voice can speak to us through any other voice. We'll have the open heart 
and the open ears to hear it and then interpret it through the standards that he's given us in his word and in our relationship with him. So it's part of following his will for us. Do we have anyone that we'd like to lift up in prayer this week and lay forward some requests to our Heavenly Father? Kim Clausen's dad had a heart attack yesterday in California. Okay. Um, his name's Glenn Pullman. And also prayers Glenn for Pullman? Yeah. Okay. She, and she's having a really hard time being so far away from him. Glenn lifted up. And... Well, remember us as we finish our last week of school before Christmas break. And also, um, I would like you to remember the students in prayer. It's a long week, a long break, but they are safe and warm and cared for during the long days of not being at school. Mm-hmm. Yes, may it be an enjoy, enjoyable and enjoy, may they enjoy their time over the Christmas break holiday safely and well. And the praise Cassie had her doctor's appointment and got to see grandbaby number two. Awesome. <laughs> praise God. Justice passing away in prayers for Susie, Justice and all of their family. For sure. Um, any other? Well, Janine Cook with um, two complications with her pregnancy. Janine Cook with any pregnancy complications? Yep. Son John. Mm-hmm. With some medical issues. Mm-hmm. Cree Francois. Cree Francois. for the doctors in the hospital over there and recovery for Crete, whatever's Luanda Ray Hill recovering from his hip surgery.
Yes. My praise is I made it through the cancer, and right now I'm looking cancer free. Yes. Praise God. <laughs> This year, this time, I spent a lot of time in Rapid. I got to go back out for a three months check. Keep me in your prayers that it's still cancer free. Yes, amen. Did I hear right that Betty Lindenberg passed away? Okay, yes, apparently so. Keep up Betty Lynn and Briggs family lifted up. Mike and Laura Hicks as Mike goes through his body receiving its full restoration and recovery from that. Great praise for new books that we can enjoy through whatever snowstorm stuff might be coming. So make sure you check out a good book over here. <coughs> yes, thank you. Let's lift up these praises and prayers to our Heavenly Father this morning. Father God, we just come before you as your children. We thank you that lift up praise that Cassie had her appointment and was able to get first witnesses for grandbaby number two. So we just thank and praise you, Father, for more life coming. Thank you so much. And we thank you, Father God, for recovering restoration from cancer. We just thank you and trust that that recovery will be maintained and consistent. And every trip back to the doctors will just continue to be a praise and worshiping you for complete cancer recovery, Father. We thank and praise you in Jesus' name for that. We thank you for the new books, blessed to the church, that they can help people come to grow in their relationship with you as they enjoy these good books and the different readings. And we give you thanks and praise, most of all, and praise for salvation through your son, Jesus. We thank you that he brought us back into a relationship with you, Father. And we also thank you, Father, for being the God who forgives all our sins and heals all of our diseases. And that by Jesus' stripes, we claim healing and restoration for Glenn Coleman, recovery, recovering from the heart attack situation. We ask that you have comfort and peace for Kim Clausen, his daughter, while she goes through being away from her dad through this time frame. And also we uh, lift up Ann Lyon's son, John, with his medical issues, Father. And just ask for wisdom and guidance for the doctors over his medical recovery. We lift up Janine Cook and ask for wisdom and guidance for the doctors for the pregnancy complications that she's dealing with and that the life that she has inside of her would be able to come forth healthy and well and joyful and alive, be a part of their family and grow into your family, Father. And we lift up Rwanda Rayville and just ask for a successful, safe recovery from hip surgery. And Father, we just thank and praise you for complete and total restoration for Cree Francois from whatever has caused her for the ER trip over to Pine Ridge this morning. And Father, we lift up Mike Hicks and just thank you for full and complete restoration of health and wellness for Mike and provision and sustenance for both and peace for both he and Laura as they go through this time of restoration and recovery. We lift up Wayne and Donna Bond and just ask for continued restoration and recovery for both of them for their bodies, as well as John and Sheila Patel for restoration and recovery and just continued well, good health for them. And we ask for uh, 
your peace and your comfort for through the time of grief the Susie Justice and their family for Doug Justice passing just ask for peace and comfort and your guidance for Susie and their Doug's family we lift up Betty Lennonbrink's family <clears throat> and ask for peace and comfort for each of them as they go through this time of grief <clears throat> Father, we would also lift up all of the teachers and the children in the school systems. We just ask that each of them receive guidance in preparing for and following your will, preparing for the Christmas break celebration and time away from school, and that each of the kids would be able to enjoy a safe, warm, good, loved time away from school during the Christmas break this year. We thank you for your hand of love and guidance being over all of the teachers and children. And we also lift up Bob and Missy Barkley, Father. We just ask for peace and provision for all the mission work in Paraguay and the other areas that they do. That they, all the people down there would be able to celebrate the birth of your son through the ministries that they do in Paraguay. And Father God, we thank you for the moisture that has come. We thank you for moisture that is coming and that this moisture will bring forward life next spring. Lift up all these prayers in Jesus' name with the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Grace and peace, friends.